Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here, got another Master Duel video for you all. So I'm coming back to Math Mech because, uh, as some of you have probably heard by now, uh, this card recently received yet another hit, not here in Master Duel, but in the TCG. So, and both the TCG and OCG, Math Mech Circular was at one, uh, whereas it's still three at three here. Um, and in the TCG, it recently got banned, uh, even though as far as I can tell, or from what I've been hearing at least, uh, Mathbeck has not put up any really, you know, decent amount of results uh, since getting limited. So uh, it definitely seems like, um, at least on the TCG side, Konami is just kind of like, you know, ready for people to move on from Mathbeck Circular, <laughs> from Mathbeck in general, which is such a shame, right? Because this card was very clearly made with the intention of like helping Mathbeck as a deck, and putting this card to zero really feels like Konami saying like, yeah, we just don't want this deck to be good anymore, uh, which is a, a shame to, again, I think anyway, to. Uh, take an approach like that. But to be fair, uh, it is TCG side, and Master Duel hits tend to, not always of course, but tend to uh, align a little bit more closely with like OCG hits. Uh, Fountain to one, I believe is actually an example, if I recall correctly, Fountain is actually at one in the OCG, but is still at two in the TCG. So as far as Math Mech itself goes uh, within Master Duel, um, well, with, uh, you know, Circular getting banned in TCG, the deck definitely feels like it's in Konami's crosshairs, so I uh, definitely wanted to get some games in with it uh, before, you know, anything happened to it. Um, we did already see the diameter to one hit. Here's the thing, right? I think Circular does probably need to go to one in Master Duel, but I think Circular and one of each diameter are... That's going to feel fairly bad um it's like not the most like you know fun way to play in the world uh with math mech but i think the deck would definitely still be playable even if both these cards are at one and i will say this if diameter at one keeps circular from going to zero i would definitely prefer that so uh, maybe that is the approach that konami is deciding to take the other thing i was kind of thinking about as far as math mech goes that i thought was uh kind of curious is um, the fact that Konami recently put out a selection pack that has Math Mech cards, including Circular, available in it. Uh, it does seem a bit odd to me, uh, you know, this idea that Konami would end up, uh, banning the Circular, or, you know, hitting it, I guess, in some capacity, uh, you know, even after putting it in a selection pack, because, you know, the idea is that... Uh, a lot of the incentive to buy into that pack is Zodiacs are in it too, that's definitely there too, but uh, Math Mech being a top competitive deck at the moment uh, definitely uh, is another draw towards buying that pack. So would Konami put this card to one, like in theory, even on the next ban list while that pack was still in the shop? I don't know. I, I, I could definitely see them doing it. Like, it's not something that I think is like... Uh, I don't think it's a move that's beyond them. It would be a bit odd, but I also at the same time know that they tend not to like to hit URs, uh, particularly ones that are uh, in packs that people can currently spend gems, i.e. also uh, real money on. So who knows? Who knows what they'll end up doing? Um, for balance purposes, ideally, I would like to see circular go to one and then diameter come back to three. I think even keeping sign up mining at two is completely fine, frankly. Um, the card is very strong, like being able to rotor for any cyber monster is very good, uh, not just in math, Mike, but in general, um, being able to find any one of these, you know, it's just a very wide range of uh, uh, decks that can, you know, just grab any cyber monster. So um, yeah, you know, I, I think this card at two is fine. Um, again, Circular is a very, very strong card, but at the same time, I think its presence is necessary for... I mean, just look at where Math Mech was before Circular came out of Master Duel. Like, nobody played it. Um, and you had to use... I always forget the card's name because I didn't play the deck, uh, you know, but you just you had to use the, the Math Mech or the Cyber Monster that gives you an extra normal summon. Uh, and it's like, just this feels so bad compared to Circular, you know, but... Uh, to be fair, we do have the Firewall cards, but, you know, Circular is, of course, part of that line as well. Uh, as far as my build here goes, we are pretty much on the same list. I, I literally only changed one card. I swapped out one Infinite Permanence for one Triple Tactics Talent, uh, just to have a little bit of diversity as far as, like, the disruption and just general options that we have in this list. But, uh, you know, Droll is obviously still a great card in this meta. Nib, I think he's better now than even before this most recent selection pack came out. Um, so definitely glad to have it in the list. And yeah, I mean, the extra deck I've been 
uh, totally fine with still. The one Alan version I was a little bit apprehensive about, but it honestly hasn't really come up this needing the second one that much, so uh, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Um, these games that we're about to see here are from the stream that is at the time I'm recording this. I uh, did just earlier tonight. So if you are ever interested in checking out some of the games that I play potentially for videos uh, Live then you can definitely go ahead and check out the in the description below you will find a link to my twitch page uh, You can head over there. You can follow and or subscribe that'll get you direct notifications of when I go live uh, You can also check out my Twitter where I will pin a schedule uh, for when I go live And that's also pinned in the discord as well all of that available in the description. So uh, we'd love to see you there It's always a good time. So um, let's go ahead and break this list down card by card, and then we'll check out those games. Okay, we are on two Effect Failure, two Joel Knockbird, one Dotscaper, three Maxi, three Ash Blossom, and Joy Spring, one Firewall Guardian, one Mathmech Sigma, one Mathmech Edition, one Mathmech Subtraction, one Mathmech Multiplication, one Mathmech Diameter, three Mathmech Circular, three Firewall Defensor, three Parallel Exceed, one Nibiru the Primal Being, two Cynet Mining, one Mathmech Equation, one Triple Tactics Talent, three Small World, two Call by the Grave, one Cross Set Designator, two Infinite Impermanence, and then one Math Mech Super Factorial. That is our main deck. For the extra deck, we're on one Cybers D Save Worm, one Prime Math Mech Laplacian, one Prime Math Mech Alan Bershon, one Mirror Logic Aggregator, one Salmon Gray Almirage, one Lingaribo, one Link Decoder, one Update Jammer, one Splash Mage, one G Golem Crystal Heart, one Transcode Talker, one Decode Talker Heat Soul, one Access Code Talker, one Firewall Dragon Dark Fluid, Neo Tempest Terahertz, and then finally one Firewall Dragon Singularity. There is our list, let's check out these games. Okay, our first opponent is going to be on Fluanderese, which, you know, actually after playing this game, I realized I have not played against this deck in quite a while actually, it's been a hot minute, so... I'm going to take the first turn here. I uh, got a couple of Maxis as well as a lot of gas in hand. We're going to lead with the Math Mech Circular. Sending the Sigma, especially into the field. Sigma F is going to activate to bring itself back. Circular will activate, adding the Super Factorial. We're definitely looking like we just have a fairly standard... Actually, no, this is better than standard, isn't it? We have the Parallel Exceed and the Subtraction. I believe we are actually going to be able to do not only the Singularity plus Terahertz, but also the Heat Soul on top of it for the full, full turn one combo. So, to end with all three of those, I think you pretty much always need to have Parallel Exceed to have enough bodies to be able to do it. Well, that plus the extender as well. It's like, you know, it's not something, it's not a combo line that you're going to go into, like, super duper often. Um, because even if you open, like, let's say, Parallel Exceed plus Circular plus Small World, right? You shouldn't use Small World for the extra extender to end on the Heat Soul. It's definitely better to use Small World to grab, say, like, an Ash Blossom, and that way your combo will be protected against the... Uh, what is it called? The Maxi, of course. That's also why sometimes people will chain Maxi to your small world, and why it might not actually be a bad idea to do so yourself if you find yourself in that situation, right? Because uh, then you can get the Maxi out before your opponent has a chance to add the Ash. That does come with the downside of you could potentially give your opponent the opportunity to, um, you know, not give you any draws or activate a trouble tactics talent, but, you know, like any maneuver, it comes with its own. Uh, potential drawbacks, so. And there is the Heat Soul to finish it off. So there we have Singularity, uh, Terahertz, Heat Soul, uh, as well as the Super Factorial. We did have to summon the Dotscaper with the, uh, the, the, the Terahertz, that one, uh, to do it. But we can just send the D-Save Worm during the draw phase and then do it that way. Uh, they're going to lead with the Extrav, drawing a couple of cards, so... Uh, then they're going to chain the call by on the on the D saver. I'm not chain rather, but activate. I'm going to chain, however, the super factorial to this call by on the D save worm. The reason I chose to activate super factorial in this particular moment was in case my opponent has a second call by the grave in the hand. Which, given the timing of this activation, I lightly suspected would be the case. Um, the idea being that if my opponent does have a second call by and tries to use it on, say, diameter here, right? Uh, then I could simply chain the D-Save Worm because it hasn't been banished by Call By yet, right? Uh, it's still in the graveyard because the chain leak hasn't resolved. So then I could chain D-Save Worm to the second Call By. But 
Uh, opponent does not have another chain here, so we're just going to go ahead and fire off the Super Factorial. We do miss out on the, uh, what's it called, the, uh, you know, on-field removal, be it a monster or a spell trap card from the location, but we can still hand snipe, and we still have the Omni Negate as well, so I'm fine with this. Uh, this, of course, in addition to the other monsters we've summoned, so... No D save worm, so no more spell trap negate. Laplacian F is going to activate, and we end up ripping Philanderies in the Advent of Adventure. Now, the opponent is going to have a Book of Moon here for the Laplacian. Uh, although, I do have the Omni Negate effect, it doesn't really. I mean, I could have, you know, just activated it to keep this in attack mode. Arguably, that might be better because it has zero defense points as opposed to 2,000 attack. Uh, but either way, it's going to eat this Omni. But it's going to follow up with a triple tactics talent. Now here, I was sure they were going to take my Terror Hertz, and I was a little bit scared, because it's like, well, you know, I can always use Singularity to bounce the Terror Hertz if they threaten to move to battle phase. I would have to do it in the main phase, because I would not be able to activate it. Well, I would have just get negated by Terror Hertz. Then my opponent could potentially, you know, do the rest of their plays uh, with, you know, I'd be out of disruption, right? But they elected to hand rip instead. I, I do feel this was a misplay. I think they should have taken the Terror Hertz here, for sure. Moving to Battle Phase, we're going to follow up with the Evenly. I'm going to keep the Singularity so that I can get a bounce. Obviously, I know it's Philanderies at this point, so... Sending the Ryza to add the Rabina. Uh, I, this way, I know I can bounce one of their birds, and then they won't be able to get the Double Tribute here. Uh, they use the Eaglin. I'm going to chain the Singularity effect here on the Rabina, so they'll only have one monster. Now, they must only be playing one Ryza because they added an M-Pen here. Uh, people in chat pointed out that this was a misplay for that reason, but... Because they could have summoned Ryza with, uh... Yeah, by tribute summoning... Oh, but they... Wait, wait, wait. It's only by tribute summoning one tribute summoned a monster? Okay, so I don't think they could have summoned a Ryza even if they had a second one. But either way, uh, yeah, they add the M-Pen, they just have, you know, nothing left they can do. So, um... My hand might have looked pretty dead. Uh, you know, I had double maxi Ash Blossom talents. Oh, dead. You know, I obviously have the singularity, so it's not like I have nothing. But um, it doesn't look like I can extend my plays any further. However, uh, because we play Almirage, which I do, I think this card is very much mandatory uh, in this list, especially if you're playing Parallel Exceed, then I can normal summon it, link it off of the Almirage. So proc the singularity to bring back the Transcode. Transcode F is going to bring back Splash Mage. Splash Mage is going to summon and bring back the Almirage. And then uh, yeah, it's pretty easy for me to just make Axis Code Talker here and OTK, uh, especially because I haven't used C or, uh, Circular. So it's not like I'm locked into only attacking with one monster. Definitely should have co-linked the Axis Code with the Transcode, but I also know their last card is M Pen, so it doesn't matter at this point. We're just going to go ahead and finish them off here. So there you go. This is a pretty good first game, I feel like, because it demonstrates not only building up the turn one board, but then also following up and using the disruption uh, against the opponent to the maximum effect, because uh, that is definitely a very major piece of it, right? Like, it's not just knowing the combo line. Uh, using the disrupts that you set up with your turn one board is absolutely a very crucial skill as well. So uh, there is that tool. Let's go ahead and go into the next one. All right, our next opponent is going to be on Cash Tira. Uh, this deck is a Tomahawk build. Uh, they do have like the full um, kind of package in there. I saw like the O-line and everything in the main. So uh, we're going to be taking the second turn. Just custom going second hand here, don't mind me. But it's going to lead with the Unicorn. Unicorn, I'm going to negate this with the Imperm. Imperm is interesting, right? It's always a bit of a crapshoot when it comes to using it against Cash Tira, but I was fine using Imperm here, rather than Ash Blossom or Drollnlock Bird. Um, I guess I could have used Drollnlock and still stopped their combo line. But the problem that I kind of faced with that is that I want to be able to still... Um, I'm not still... What is, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, I I don't know, I, I just feel like there are so many worlds where they still put up a scary board anyway, right? Like, they can still have, a even if I droll here after they add, let's say they add Theosis. Um, they can still activate Theosis for Fenrir, and Unicorn Theosis is still not really some, or Unicorn Fenrir, rather. Even that by itself is still not something I'm really trying to put up with. And they can definitely have a pretty easy time extending even further beyond that. So... The way I figure it, I have the Ash Blossom too, so I'm going to Imperm the Unicorn. If they just have the Theos in hand, I can just Ash Blossom that. And that they still have plays beyond that, they just wanted it more. So, 
Uh, that was my reasoning for not using the droll here. I just, I thought it would be giving them still more than I wanted them to have, if that makes any sense. It might be a bit greedy. It, 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 there's definitely an acknowledgement uh, that there is a bit of greed uh, behind that, but uh, they end up normal summoning the Ash Blossom and going for the Bear, and then using Birth to bring back the Unicorn. So, uh, you know, Fenrir, Unicorn, Baron, Unicorn, I'm still going to have to put up with kind of the same thing either way. Thankfully, we ripped Firewall Defensor. Uh, if I had had, like, the Circular in hand instead of, like, the second Sinite Mining or the Defensor, I might have just drolled because, um, you know, I know with Sinet plus Defensor, I, I should be able to play through this. So, uh, they have the Maxi, we have the Ash Blossom, thankfully, and now they only have one card left, as well as the Extra Deck whip Rip with the Unicorn. The thing is, though, Defensor can fairly easily pivot between Terahertz and the Access Code line. Now, what they actually ended up taking was the Link Decoder, which, I will say, when I played the actual game live, um, this duel I actually didn't play on the stream. This was my one warm-up game before the stream started. When I was playing the duel live, they definitely took a minute looking with Unicorn. I wonder, I feel like they might have kind of gotten in their own head about taking Link Decoder, um, thinking it might be crucial to all of my plays, but I can definitely make plays without it, like, very easily. I think Firewall Defensor can even go into a Terahertz without needing Link Decoder. I'm pretty sure it can. But honestly here, I think I'm just going to go straight for an Axis Code Update Jam or OTK. Uh, it's just the simplest line, although to be fair, there is like a merit to making, you know, the Allen version instead and getting the circular and establishing more bodies or whatever, but I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just didn't think they had it, you know? I just was fairly confident. I was like, this last card has to be pretty much exactly Nibiru for me to lose here. And Kashira does not always play Nibiru, but they do sometimes play Nibiru. We did lose to a Kashira deck that was playing Nibiru uh, during this stream, so... Yeah, I'm gonna pop the Baron and the Unicorn, but I'm not popping the Kashira Birth. Uh, well, they conceded first, but... Here, you would want to pop the Baron and Unicorn, but not the Birth. The reason to not pop Cashier Birth before just battling with the access code is that if your opponent has no cards at all on board, they can use an infinite permanence from the hand to negate access code, which will drop its attack points, and then you can't OTK. Now, granted, if it was infinite impermanence, they probably would have just set it, so it's pretty likely it's not that, but it's better to play around it than not. Uh, and there's no, you know, there's no reason the Birth is, there's a reason to get rid of it anyway, it's just like pointless, so... Um, yeah, that go, yeah, that goes and shows, I think, too, also the ability for the deck to play around a decent number of disrupts, right? Um, like, there it was just an Omni and an extra deck rip, which isn't, like, too, too much, but to be fair, there are a lot of decks out there that even with, like, good hands would lose to an Omni and an extra deck rip, but... Um, it's, it's one of many reasons why Terahertz is so good. Like, you know, it's, Mathematic right now is such a culmination of all the various support that's come before it. Um, but, god, Terahertz is just, <laughs> that, that card took the deck to a whole other level. So, uh, we still have a couple more games to see. Uh, speaking of whole other levels, I think I know which game I'm going to show next. Let's see the next one here. Okay, so before we go into this duel, I'm actually going to start by showing my opponent's list. So our opponent is on a Synchron deck, which I'm no stranger to facing against Synchron. However, um, my opponent is on not just one or two, but three copies, including one royal, of Cosmic Blazar Dragon, uh, which is not something I have encountered with Synchrons before. Uh, I have never had this card summoned against me in Master Duel before, and we're going to see it played in this game. I was very eager to include this duel because this is a combo line that uh, I've definitely not encountered before, <laughs> and uh, everyone in chat was very shocked by it too, honestly. Uh, we're going to be taking the second turn, and... Our hand not only has no disruption in it, but it's got both Dotscaper and Math Mech multiplication in it, which is less than ideal by all accounts. But, um, so we're going to start with the Junk Speeder here. Um, or they're going to start the Junk Speeder, rather, going into that and dumping all the important Synchron monsters on the board, adding the Arrive in Light. I'm not going to commentate over this, like I know what's going on here. <laughs> uh, not exactly, anyway. I mean, you know, I have definitely encountered... 
uh, Synchron lines before, but not any that have turboed out Tyrant, Red Dragon, Archfiend. Hang on, I want to pause this real quick so we can stop and appreciate this already very unique Synchro monster that's already been called out to the field. Um, but it definitely does not stop there. So we're, they're going for... This is another card I've never seen before this duel. Um, well, actually, I have seen the Tyrant Red Dragon Archfiend. I've seen it in Yu-Gi-Oh! Archive, funnily enough, the anime, but... Um, Omni Dragon Bro Tar. <laughs> Bro! Um, this card says, If a monster you control is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can special summon this card from the graveyard if it was there when the monster was destroyed or hand, even if not. But banish it when it leaves the field. If this special... If this is... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Uh, if this card is special summoned, you can target one face-up monster on the field. Discard one card, and if you do, add one monster from your deck to your hand with the same type and attribute as that target, but a different name. Very unique monster. I've never encountered it before. So, uh, they're adding the Doppel Warrior here. Now, the Converging Wills and the Tyrant Red Dragon Archfiend are sinking into the Shooting Majestic Dragon. Which is going to get immediately sacked off for the start of Synchron. That looks really weird, but this will actually end up coming up a little bit later. Alright, opponent's pivoting into the Garden Rose Maiden line here, adding the Black Garden. Uh, this card is pretty good for a couple of reasons. One of which is, of course, adding the Black Garden. But another we will... Well, again, we'll see it later. Going for Assault... Blackwing, Sohoya, the Rainstorm. Actually, another card from Yu Yu RGV, funnily enough. And then Material Metal Marcher. Uh, there's probably a number of you who have never seen any of these cards before, but the Material Metal Marcher is definitely, you know, that is a thing in Synchrons. I had never seen this card either. Celestial Double. Uh, I've seen that one. Yeah, this one. Celestial Double Star Shaman. Four level two non-tuna monsters from your hand and or graveyard in defense position. Yeah, they're effects negated and you can only synchro summon. It's a synchro tuner as well. Okay, here's Cosmic Blazar number one. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look here after my opponent summons Denglong at what this card does. So Cosmic Blazar Dragon is a level 12 synchro monster with 4,000 attack and defense you make it with a synchro tuner and two or more non-tuner synchro monsters it's basically for those of you who know shooting quasar dragon it's the same requirements must be synchro summoned quick effect you can banish this card until the end phase to activate one of these effects when your opponent activates a card or effect negate the activation and if you do destroy that card so omni negate when your opponent would summon that's any kind of summon Summon a monster, zzz, negate the summon, and if you do destroy that monster, zzz. so that's an Omni summon, negate, and destroy. And if they Pendulum summon, by the way, this destroys all of them, uh, or just summon multiple monsters at once in general. Or when an opponent's monster declares an attack, negate the attack and then end the battle phase. By the way, note that this card is not once per turn. Those words are not on this card at all. Okay, looks like Doppel Warrior is coming back, singing off of the Junk Seacron, going for the second, the second copy of Assault Blackwing Sohuya. Which is going to bring back the first copy, as well as Doppel Warrior dropping a couple of Doppel Tokens onto the field. I've definitely summoned my fair share of Doppel Tokens, not in Master Duel, but in the TCG in the past. Alright, Denglong and the two Blackwing monsters are now sinking for Cosmic Blazar number two. Uh, these have 4,000 attack and defense, by the way. Black Garden's coming down as well. Uh, now they're going into the Formula Synchron. It's funny, here I got a little bit worried when they were putting out these Rose tokens, because I was like, I realized, wait a second, I can't do anything, like, extra deck-wise with these Rose tokens. These are zone blocked. Like, these are, these are blocked zones at this point. So I was like, as they were putting them out, I was like, oh no. But then they just used Black Garden's effect. Bringing back the Garden Rose Maiden. The reason they did this is to sync with the formula and the Blackwing for Cosmic Blazar number three. Number three. They summoned all three of their Cosmic Blazars on me on turn one. Oh, and we're also going for Cybers Integrator. For those of you who've never seen this card, I have never seen this card before this duel. It's a level three Cyber Synchro monster. 
It's generic, 1,000 attack and defense. Discard a Synchro Summoned, you can. Special Summon one Cyber Stunner from your hand or graveyard defense position. Also, you cannot Special Summon monsters for the rest of this turn, except Cyber Monsters. If this Synchro Summoned card is sent to the graveyard, you can draw one card. You can only use each effect of this card once per turn. Uh, that's gonna... Oh, the Garden Rose Maiden then banishes itself to bring back that shooting Majestic Dragon from the very beginning of the turn, uh, which is a monster effect quick effect negate. Oh no, it's an Omni Negate, sorry. I'm gonna Imperm to try to negate the Royal Copy. I have no delusions I'm gonna win this duel, by the way, uh, but I definitely decided to play it all the same. Get a small world for the Circular. They did negate this, but not that they really needed to. Circular F sending Sigma, shooting Majestic will activate, banishing itself to negate the effect and then banish my Circular. Uh, by the way, they banish a Dragon Synchro monster, so yep, their Assault Synchro is going to activate and bring back their Majestic Shooting uh, Star Dragon to the field. By the way, also, not once per turn. It is actually a soft once per turn, but since it was re-summoned, it can use its effect again. So, that is yet another piece to this board. Uh, my opponent was gracious enough to let me make the Alembertion, but as soon as I activate the effect, yep, there is the other non-Royal Cosmic Blazar. They got to keep their Royal Cosmic Blazar on the field, and it can even still negate a card if they wanted it to. They also, again, still have the Majestic... Uh, what is it? The Majestic Shooting Star Dragon as well. But as I said, I was ecstatic to be able to show this duel to you all, because I have never seen someone go so fast or feel so alive before. Holy cow. Uh, I feel this is the synchro deity themselves descended from the heavens to uh, blast me with three cosmic plates, our dragon. They didn't even turn the shooting star to attack mode. <laughs> it's so good. All right, we do have one more duel to see, so let's go into that one. Okay, our last opponent is on a labyrinth deck that, funnily enough, uh, I was just talking in, I believe, the last video, the one where we saw the Duelist Cup games about how we saw those lab lists that were playing, like, a bunch of, you know, uh, like, floodgates, like the Power Sink Stones, and it had, like, Solemns, too. Uh, I pointed that out, and I was like, you know, we'll probably see lab lists that look like that on the ladder. We actually did run into one like that. Uh, they're on multiple Solemns, as well as, again, those uh, Power Sink Stones, too. So, um, but it's okay, because we got the first turn. <laughs> Uh, I will say, to be fair, um, Mathemic already, regardless of having the first or second turn, does have a pretty good Labyrinth matchup by virtue of the existence of Lingaribo. Uh, all you have to do is stick any level 4 or lower Cyber uh, Monster, and then that translates into Lingaribo, and then you can out uh, whatever trap card is particularly threatening to shut you down, so... Uh, this is just going to be a fairly standard Singularity plus Terra Hertz line here. Yeah, which you can you can do this line if you open Circular or Firewall Defensor plus any Cyber Extender. Uh, could be Parallaxy, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, it could be Addition, Subtraction. Just getting any other Cyber Spotty on the field pretty much will do it. Oh yeah, I kept having to summon Link Decoder at like a slightly different time than I usually do because I kept putting Circular in the zone under the EMZ where Transcode would go, but it's fine. It doesn't really matter. I will say I should be putting these on the left side just in case I happen to go against Adding Mystery. Oh, this game! <laughs> I forgot about this actually. So, uh, I actually misplayed horribly here. Um, I totally glossed over this too. Uh, just like I did during the actual duel live on stream as well. Um... I think the same thing happened here. Sometimes I'll see Imperm in my hand, and I just, my brain is like, I'm playing a math deck, deck, and I have a trap card in my hand, therefore this must be super factorial. Um, so, I just thought this Imperm was super facts. That's why I didn't add it. I should have just summoned addition while I had circular on the field. It literally would have been that simple. There, there was nothing to it. Um, so... Uh, this will just, we'll just call this, uh, hard mode, right? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going easy on my opponent and playing on hard mode for them, so, uh, they get to play against a math deck board that does not have super factorial, but, to be fair, maybe they don't know that, maybe they just think the face down card is already super fact. Anyway, uh, they're gonna lead with x -Trav. You'll notice I let it resolve, by the way, 
Um, I didn't use Ash Blossom or D Save Worm against it. You might be wondering why I let them get that plus one. The reason is I don't like negating, as a rule of thumb, I, I don't like negating Pot of Extravagance, Prosperity, Desires is kind of another story sometimes, but um, Extrav and Prosperity, those cards in particular, just about any single deck that plays them has better negation targets, be it for Ash Blossom or D Save Worm, for searching or drawing or spell, just general spell trap negation. So I tend to let those cards resolve Extrav and Prosperity and then just negate whatever follows. Uh, this is how I do it, so. Poe's going to try to even lead me. Second time, actually, this play session we got even lead, which I don't normally get even lead that much, but I'll just use a D Save Worm on that. It's not that big of a deal. All right, Lord of the Heavenly Prison will reveal itself, and then they'll set three. End phase, I'm going to use the um, Terahertz for the Dotscaper, because we didn't need it uh, during their turn, just to get the extra body. I'm also going to use Singularity to bounce the back row that they set second, because that tends to be the scariest one, but that's, of course, a very subjective and personal take. Uh, I'll use Singularity to force the other back row here. It ends up being the big welcome lab. Uh, I'm just going to Ash Blossom it. Compulse putting the Terahertz back here is uh, totally fine, by the way, because we get to use the Terahertz effect anyway to dump a multiplication, which will dump, or uh, dump, double the Singularity's attack to 8,000. Uh, they will get to throw down the Lord of the Heavenly Prison in defense mode, but we have the Dotscaper as well as Math Mech Edition, which is enough bodies to ensure we can get there. Honestly, well, no, actually, because Dotscaper is not under Singularity, that it's by itself wouldn't be enough, but Addition definitely is, so... I should have put Addition under the Singularity. That was actually a misplay on my part. Not that we need it, but... Alright, G Golem Crystal Heart coming down here, bringing back the Transcode, and then my opponent's just gonna get Seed. We could've just gone into Access Code Talker, popped the... Um, popped the... What is it called? Lord of the Heavenly Prison, and then just uh, won out from there pretty easily, so... Uh, yeah, that is going to go ahead and do it for this video. Thank you everybody so much for uh, enjoying another round of Math Mech with me while we still could. Um, Lord knows how much longer it'll be. Um, well, I suppose Konami does, but <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and just move on to our outro. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching all the way to the very end. That means a whole lot to me, and it's also a fantastic way to support the channel. And if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways besides YouTube, there are plenty of ways to do that. If you check out the description below, you'll find a bunch of links down there. One of them goes to my Patreon. You're actually seeing the names of everyone subscribed to the Patreon on the screen right now. So if you're interested in getting your name in the credits here at the end, if you want to see more daily Master Duel content, or if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one private coaching sessions, I offer all of that on Patreon. I also stream live on Twitch. Feel free to go ahead and click that link and follow and or subscribe there. I also have the Discord community if you want to follow that link where hundreds of duelists have already signed up. Free to join and you can just come hang out, talk about the game, and chill in general. The final link that's going to be in the description is my Twitter. You can follow that if you want some more notifications of what's happening with the channel. So all in all, thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.